Hi, I did a bit of an Instagram rant this week uh, about the X106. Um, the reason I did the rant is because of the amount of negativity for the camera online. Um, I suppose I better start at the beginning. And yeah, I'm 60 years old. So when I first started in photography, it was with box cameras. Then I moved on to this and that. And one of the things I followed was images that I liked. Images that I liked to look of. Images that were the way I would like to take a photograph. Techniques that I wanted to try, like in the early days of beginning, smoke trails, light trails along a road, long exposure photography, photographing people, which was obviously the thing I do, which is street photography, etc. Landscapes. But I wanted to learn how to do this. Now I did this with old cameras with film, and I progressed on as I went from, you know, like um, a Zenith TTL to a this to a that to a Nikon FM2. And I stayed with Nikon cameras for 40 years, let's call it, roughly 30, 40 years. Um, and the reason I did that is because I mainly had a manual camera in film that I could use the exposure triangle on the outside to get the exact image I wanted. Now, if you look back over the years from the Carter Bressons, the, the landscape photographers of the fame and fortune, and everyone started that way. The modern way is different. Everyone starts out on a digital camera. A lot of people will start out on a smartphone and want to progress. One of the biggest questions I used to get was, what is the best camera for me? And I used to say, well, what smartphone have you got? Well, that'll do for you. Because you, people always say, what's the best camera I can buy for 300 pounds? Well, you've just spent a thousand pound on a smartphone. So why would you want to get something for 300 pounds that's probably got a worse sensor in it than the smartphone you own? It didn't make any sense to me. It's very hard to talk about this and explain this to people. And when someone like Fujifilm as a brand brings out the X106 over the X105, 4, whatever, people will always knock it down. But at the end of the day, you've got to look at what you want personally in a camera. Now, one of the things as a professional photographer I used to consider was, if I'm using a camera and it goes wrong, what happens next? Now, the good thing is, I have a camera and it's in warranty, I can send it back. Fujifilm, I've never sent, I've honestly never sent a, a camera back to Fujifilm in my life. Um, so nothing really goes wrong with them. I used Nikon for years and I bought the Nikon D3S and it had faults on it. And guess when the faults were? Two weeks out of warranty. Did Nikon help me out with that? No, they didn't. So I started to get a little bit fed up with Nikon at that time. Don't get me wrong, like their cameras used to be absolutely bulletproof and even some of their early digital stuff was. And then things started going wrong. As te technology moves on, things do go wrong. Now I haven't got a problem with Nikon. I didn't slag Nikon off as such. I made some funny um, memes to put online about it, but that's just, that's just me. Anyone knows me from the past will know that. So in a camera, I look for something that's gonna help me to take better photographs. Now, I've got the X100F and the X-Pro2. Um, neither of those have got a tilting rear screen. So recently I purchased an X-T30, mainly because of it's a tilting screen with my eyesight and the way I shoot these days, that works better for me. The truth is, I can now move myself forward to an X106 and get rid of the X-T30. The only thing I'd lose is interchangeable lenses. Now, I have to consider what I want to do and how I want to shoot. The beauty of the X100 over any of the others is the completely silent shutter. So if you want to take candid photographs on a train or a bus or anywhere else, and you don't want anyone to hear the shutter sound, or you're a bit paranoid about that, that camera's the one for you. Forget how many pixels it's got, whether it's got video capability. And now I know people want this sort of stuff, but it's a bloody camera. It's a street camera. It's a camera designed by Fujifilm from the X100 onwards that most street photographers adopted that was just a great, easy, portable camera that you could use for landscape, travel, everything. And the beauty of it having one single lens is you can do all that and you can crop the hell out of most of the photographs anyway. So you, it's a pretty versatile camera. I wouldn't muck about with other lenses for it unless you want to go slightly wider and there are option, a lens options available for it. But once you put those lens options available on, the camera is heavy again and you've got to carry stuff around. The beauty of the X106 
is it's just a camera, just like the iPhone, you can carry it around. Yes, you can edit in camera. Yes, you can send those pictures to your iPhone. Or yes, you can copy them onto your card and put them on your iPad or whatever device you want to edit on. I edit on my phone or on my iPad using Snapseed and the Apple software. That's all I use this th these days. I do not pay for um, Lightroom or anything else. There's no point. I get the apps that are free on my phone. I can use to do what I want to do with them. So the, ma the basic thing about today is if you want to go and buy a new camera, then go and buy a new camera. One of the things you mustn't do is read too much online. I was six months late to the X100, the original one. And the reason I was six, six months late to the original camera is because I did read too many reviews. I listened to too many people. And the funny thing, I didn't listen to people I trusted. So what happened was I got an overall review, the X100 was crap. So I didn't buy it. I missed out on six months of using a beautiful camera that takes beautiful black and white images to go out and create some amazing work. As soon as I bought that camera and started using it, it lifted my work up another level and I started getting more work. I get features in magazines and books. I've been able to sell more work and everything. So as a professional photographer, it did amazing things for me, the X100. And then soon after that, I began working with Fujifilm to do stuff. Now, that was because I owned the camera. I bought the camera and I used the camera. I'm shocked these days. I saw a, a, something on Instagram the other day of a guy who had a toolbox full of cameras. The thing that shocked me about it was is he had all these tools, but he hasn't got any photographs. So basically, it's like having a toolbox full of tools, but you can't fix the car. This guy had gamed the algorithms on Instagram and everywhere else, and he'd got himself 100,000 followers. He was teaching workshops, but most of the stuff he did was talk about cameras. You can know everything you want to know about the bloody camera, but if you can't go and take pictures with it, what's the point in telling people about the cameras? Because the idea is it's a camera, it is a tool, but for taking photographs. So if you can't use that tool to take photographs and show us your work, how can you tell people how to be a photographer? All you can be is a gearhead. Now, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to be. If you want to go out and buy toolboxes full of cameras, go and buy toolboxes full of cameras, but you can't suddenly then start teaching people about photography because they're two different things. You can teach someone how to use a tool to undo a nut, for instance, if it's a spanner, but will they be any good or will they just keep rounding the bloody nuts off or turn it the wrong way? And I've seen all sorts of things like that in engineering. So keep it to the X106. Go and buy it if you want it. But my, if you are looking at buying it, go to a shop, pick it up, feel it, handle it, shoot it, borrow someone else's, try and borrow one off Fujifilm, hire one, get a feel for the camera. A lot of people don't like them. A lot of people will go and buy something else like one of the Ricos or something like that or a different type of camera. It doesn't matter what it is because at the end of the day, if that camera doesn't fit right in your hands and it doesn't feel good, good enough for you to use and you can't work out how to handle it, go and get something that you can. Get something that you have an emotional connection to in the way of a camera and then it will help you go and take photographs because you have an emotional connection with your camera and an emotional connection with your photography. That's my advice on it. Don't look at all the negativity online. What's happened now is just about every influencer in the world gets their hands on anything. That doesn't help you as a purchaser because half these people don't know what they're talking about. There's people getting out and getting 6K bikes and that can't even ride up a hill telling you about how crap this bike is or how good it is and everything else. They're just giving influence the, ro the, the wrong influencers the wrong stuff just because they've gained algorithms online. Listen to the photographers you like. Look at the work of photographers you love. See what gear they're using and then work out if you need that gear or you can do it with something else. You don't need to carry a backpack of lenses around. You don't need to do any of that. In fact, the step up from a smartphone would probably be the X100 because then you can learn all about the exposure triangle and go out there and take amazing photographs. That's enough from me today. See you on the next video. Take care.